Hello everyone, I hope you're having a great day. So today we're gonna to be going over the joints lab. Now in our lab, we only have one model and that's the knee model. And the rest for the, going over the other joints, we're gonna look at 3D organon anatomy. So here, just playing the video I took of the knee model we have on lab. So here's you know the patella and the patellar ligaments coming down. I move that away. Then we can look inside the knee joint here. We can see the different ligaments on this, the sides and the back and on the inside. So we'll go through and name all these as we go through here, just looking at the different parts here of the knee ligaments and so forth. So here now, starting at the beginning, uh, first we have the patella and the patellar ligament coming down through there. The important ones are then on the inside. Here we can see inside here, right there, we have the ACL. So anterior cruciate ligament. Um, so then, here we have the medial, well that would be the lateral, and the mini medial meniscus, or the menisci. Uh, those are also important as well. So meniscus is what is sitting in here and allows the femur to run on so that it doesn't completely rub on the tibia and cause lots of pain. Uh, so that's the meniscus. Then if we change our little angle here and go a little to the side. So first I look at the lateral side. I know this is the lateral side because right here is the fibula. Uh, so on the lateral side, we have the fibular collateral ligament. Uh, so fibular collateral ligament. Now this one is sometimes called the um, LCL or lateral collateral ligament as well. Whereas if we look on the other side of this model, you know, we zoom over here on the other side. Now we see the tibial collateral ligament right here, or also known as the medial collateral ligament or MCL. So you might've heard someone getting an MCL tear before, and that's what this one is referring to MCL or uh, tibial collateral um, ligament. So you see those uh, that terminology go back and forth there. All right, so now moving back through, we now go to the posterior side of the knee or the popliteal region back here. And here is where we see the other cruciate ligament right here. This is the PCL or posterior cruciate ligament. So both the PCL and ACL prevent uh, forward and backward movement of the tibia and the femur together. So if you tear one, it's easy to hyperextend your knee. So they help prevent hyperextension. Um, so then that's just showing the basic overviews of the knee, not a whole lot else to go over on this one, but I just wanted to show you and highlight the one model we have in the laboratory. Now, what I want to do now is open up 3D, 3D organon anatomy here and talk about some of the important ligaments we went over in class. So first here, uh, we have the knee. Um, so here's the, you know, the protective uh, ligaments around the knee. So right there is the, the medial collateral ligament. So we talked about these ones right now. If we go to the backside here, here we see that posterior cruciate ligament. Um, and then if we hide these two ligaments here, we didn't talk about the uh, menisco femoral ligament, uh, but that's okay. Um, but let's hide that one. And then right there is the ACL. So imagine if the tibia was pushing anteriorly, it would be pulling on that ACL and preventing um, hyperextension of the knee. Uh, whereas if we bring the PCL back in and you remove the tibia posteriorly, you can see how it would prevent that movement as well. So both of those ligaments are really important for that function. Now, these little green balls here are all the bursa. So there's lots of bursa surrounding the knee. So if we start adding the muscles around here, you can see those bursa are under the muscles because that's where a lot of movement happens. So you don't want that friction buildup to happen right there. So you can see them right in there. So there's the semimembranosus muscle. Um, so let's hide the muscles again. And so that's just the overview of the knee. There are some um, other ligaments here as well, but if we add the muscles in and tendons, so right there, uh, the patellar ligament too. Uh, now let's look at some other important joints here that we talked about in the lecture. First one up here is a glenohumeral joint. You see that's surrounded by all these ligaments here. These ligaments are named based on where they attach. So the coracochromial uh, ligament attaches from the acromion to the coracoid process and um, cor coracoclavicular goes from the clavicle to the coracoid process and so forth. Um, and then down here, so we can hide these um, capsules and go inside here and look at the, now this doesn't actually show the glenolabrum too well, but there'd be a, a 
a glenoid labrum uh, surrounding this to help make it a deeper ball and socket joint. So that's the shoulder joint. Move down to the elbow joint. Let's hide this uh, aponeurosis right here. Um, we can see this elbow joint. Remember the elbow is made up of this pivot joint because this annular ligament of how the radius rotates around the ulna. And then if we look at the ulna joint here, let's rotate this around. We can see here this little joint capsules in here and there's where the ulna sits on this joint. So there's a radial collateral ligament connecting the humerus to the radius. And then there's also an ulnar collateral ligament over here on the other side attaching to the ulna. There's the um, elbow joint. There's also the wrist joint down here. Uh, I'm not gonna talk too much detail on that, but that's where you have the carpals, which are um, sliding joints. Uh, next joint we can go over is the hip joint. It's a deep ball and socket joint and connected by all these ligaments uh, from the greater and lesser trochanter here, um, well, which would be on, we go back to the anterior side here, uh, or the posterior side, I mean. And then if we hide these ligaments, they're all named on based on where they go. So the ischiofemoral goes from the ischium to the femur, of course. Uh, but if we go inside here, I didn't check to confirm that it's here, but we'll see. Um, maybe it is. Let's hide the femur. But there is the... So they call it the lunate surface of the acetabulum. There's also the acetabular labrum as well. But no, they don't have um, the ligamentum teres on this in this program. So no ligamentum teres, but know that it would be in there attaching the head of the femur to the inside of the acetabulum here. All right, uh, let's bring our femur back because now we look weird. Um, so the last joint I wanted to mention then, just because we brought it up in the laboratory, not in the laboratory, in the lecture section, is the temporal mandibular joint. Remember, this joint is the easiest one to dislocate, and it has a very wide range of motion here, uh, and it's only connected by this lateral ligament here, and then also this ten, uh, it has this then uh, capsule around it. So it's just this little, one little ligament that supports this region here. So if we hide that there, we can see that uh, temporal mandibular a joint in there as well so that allows gliding movements elevation depression so um and protraction and retraction so it's pretty easily to dislocate that one now the one with the widest range of motion though is the glenohumeral joint okay i know this was a little short video i just wanted to go over some of the significant ligaments and features of the main joints we talked about in class if you have questions feel free to reach out and let me know not that's all i have for today and i hope you all have a great day and bye bye